Hi, this is Patricia Barnett. Welcome to Module 6. Welcome to the Psychology of Leadership. This module centers around the relevance of neuroscience in the workplace and in the development of leaders. What is neuroscience and how is it emerging? According to Dr. S.S. S. Pillay, neuroscience is the scientific study of the nervous system. This includes physiology, psychology, and anatomy. Brain science is an element of neuroscience. This addresses how the human brain works, how humans think, and how humans learn and remember. When discussing brain science, it's either the function of the brain or the structure of the brain. For this discussion, we'll take a look at both because we're talking about how the brain functions in preparation for leaders or for the development of leaders. So we'll take a look at the function, but we'll also take a look at some of the structures as well. Scientific study of the brain began centuries ago, but the first MRI or imaging of the brain really did not occur until the early 1970s. And while this study is still evolving and has evolved quite a bit since the 1970s, it shows that people respond differently at different times and to different issues based on how the brain sees things. The imaging also shows how the brain works or how the brain lights up when confronted with certain issues. It also shows that blood flow changes in response to different issues. How does neuroscience relate to leadership? There are proven leadership frameworks today based on behavior that guide and explain how we as leaders make our decision. If we're talking about organizational management, strategic planning, there are frameworks, external frameworks that we use to make our decisions. But enter the neuroscience approach and that's more internal. That approach to leadership focuses on the basic cognitive actions and reactions. The neuroscience approach also enables communication to be tailored based on how the brain receives and responds to the information it is given. Again, this is more internal and more cognitive. The neuroscience approach also creates awareness and prepares individuals for the unforeseen. So cognitively, a leader is thinking beyond what is happening right now or beyond what they see. The cognitive approach or neuroscience approach brings awareness to unconscious processes and help leaders manage discomfort, memory lapses, anxiety, and decision making. It also brings awareness to brain structure and respective function. An example of that would be fear. Fear activates the amygdala, a structure of the brain. When that happens, it impacts the entire brain. So the memory, the decision making, the rewards and the motivations are all affected just from that. This activation is essential, however, for leaders to feel emotions in themselves and also to be able to perceive those emotions in others. The neuroscience approach tells us that emotions are important in leadership, contrary to what we might think or see or hear. Neuroscience helps to identify the unconscious that may cause disruptions and allows for the alternative positive response or reaction. There's a less focus on negative and more, and more focus on the positive. It minimizes the unconscious anxi anxieties and focus more, again, on the positive. How does neuroscience relate to leadership? It embraces optimism and all of its rewards. How could neuroscience benefit my work setting? As a leader, it would allow me to be more mindful of what's taking place internally and not just externally, not just seeing what's happening in right before my eyes, but also to think internally what emotions are taking place, not just for me, but for my followers. By minimizing anxiety allow and allowing for better decision making. By not ignoring the brain signals, but by making sure I understand what those signals are telling me. By acknowledging emotions 
and allowing for leaders to be better at dealing with emotional issues themselves. After all, employees deserve a calm, optimistic, and positive leader. Neuroscience provides leaders with better insights. Productivity and efficiencies on the team may be improved due to my awareness as a leader of the unconscious. It also elicits good team morale. It sustains the health of the team dynamic. Neuroscience also allows for better outcome to issues with less worrying and more focus on problem solving. There's also less focus on negative, more on positive. This therefore reduces brain pain and might actually improve thinking. According to research, the more one focuses on challenges, the more brain pain it creates. Research indicates to let go of those challenges in that moment because it might actually improve your thinking. So perhaps move on to something different. By looking at the business in a whole different way and through a whole different lens. Neuroscience could benefit the work setting by building better relationships due to better understanding and acceptance of the cognitive. And lastly, neuroscience benefiting the workplace is ensuring or remembering that positive emotions matter and allow for our brains to get better with decision making. Thank you for watching. Hopefully the next time we go to make our decision as leaders, we will think of the science of our brain, think internally, uh, reflect internally on the cognitive, cognitive piece of our decision making versus just making a decision based on what we see in the moment. Thank you for watching.